Hey guys, welcome to the first lecture. In this first lecture, we'll get the motivation behind distributed systems by having an overview of where we can find them and what problems they solve for us. And we'll conclude by defining what a distributed system is and mention some of the challenges that come with architecting such a system, which we will learn to solve during the course. So where can we find distributed systems? Distributed systems are everywhere. Every time we watch a movie on demand, shop online, order a rideshare service through our phone, or search something on the internet, we in fact communicate with a distributed system hidden from us by a web page or an app. All those companies that provide us with those services are running highly scalable, massively distributed systems all around the globe to be able to handle millions of users and petabytes of data every single day and give us, the users, a consistent and seamless user experience. Furthermore, even the simplest website hosted on the cloud is actually running on a distributed system, as the cloud itself is a complex distributed system built specifically for companies and us, the software developers, so we can focus on our product and let the cloud vendors handle all the rest. The beauty of a well-designed and well-implemented distributed system is that you're not even aware of it or its complexity. It just works. It makes you feel like you're communicating with a single computer on the other side of the internet connection dedicated specifically for you. So what makes distributed systems so appealing? Let's try to understand it by analyzing a centralized system, which is the opposite of a distributed system first. Let's say we have a startup idea and we want to reach our users through a website or an app. For example, we want to create a new online shopping experience where people can buy computer or video games and share reviews on those purchases with their friends. So we go ahead and build an awesome looking website and a sleek mobile app and decide to host the web server on a spare computer we have in our garage. As our user base grows, our computer can no longer keep up with the number of requests and the data it needs to store. So we decide to upgrade the computer to the latest and greatest, most powerful computer we can find. That type of upgrade for a system is also referred to as vertical scaling. But unfortunately, that upgrade only delays the real problems waiting for us around the corner. As the traffic to our system keeps increasing, the performance and the memory become a bottleneck. And there is no way for us to upgrade that computer anymore. After all, there is just so much memory and compute power we can get from one single machine. So farther vertical scaling is no longer an option for us. While our computer already runs hot, we realize another problem. Our computer is actually a single point of failure. If there is a power or network outage in our area, or we simply need to restart the computer to do some maintenance, our entire service would go down. That would lead to a big loss in revenue, and most importantly, the loss of our user's trust. Another problem is now users from other continents who want to check out our website are faced with bad experience in the form of slow page load as the latency to our computer grows with distance and there's no way for us to improve that latency in this current configuration. And last but not least, our computer is open to the internet, which makes it vulnerable to hackers, DDoS attacks, and many other threats that a centralized system just cannot handle. So security and privacy also become a real concern. Luckily for us, a well-architected distributed system can scale to billions of users all around the world and handle and securely store petabytes of data and give our customers a seamless user experience no matter where they are and what device they're using. And the horizontal scalability features allows our system to grow and shrink on demand and allows us to maximize the cost efficiency of running our services. So before we start learning how to build such distributed systems, let's define exactly what we mean by that term. A distributed system is a system of several processes running on different computers, communicating with each other through the network, and are sharing a state or are working together to achieve a common goal. Although it's a short definition, there is a lot in it, so let's discuss the highlighted components one by one. 
First, let's have a refresher on what a process is. After we compile our application into an executable class or a jar file, it's stored on the file system just like any other text, music or image file. When we launch the application, the operating system creates an instance of that application in the memory. That instance is called a process. That process is entirely isolated from any other process running on the same computer, no matter if the other processes are instances of the same application or instances of different applications. Processes running on the same machine can communicate with each other through the network, the file system, and the memory through some advanced techniques that the operating system provides. This, however, is still not a distributed system because all the processes are running on the same machine. They are still sharing all the resources and cannot scale beyond the capacity of that particular computer. So if we put each process on a separate machine, those processes are completely decoupled from each other. They can scale horizontally as much as needed, meaning we can keep adding more and more machines as we need to extend our memory or processing power. And if some machines become unavailable or break down, other processes keep functioning and overall our system can stay available and continue performing its tasks. That is actually not trivial to achieve, but we will learn how to build such algorithms in the following lectures. Also, the decoupling of the processes and placing them on different machines left us with the network as the only option for communication between the processes. And finally, once we establish that communication, our job is build those processes in such a way that they would maintain a shared view of the world in a form of a state or work together to achieve a common goal. Otherwise, if each process doesn't know anything about the other, it's not a distributed system, but just a collection of computers. So our goal is going to be building the algorithms in such a way that processes can collaborate with each other and constantly make progress towards that goal. So let's quickly summarize what we've learned in this lecture. First of all, we got the motivation behind distributed systems and realized that we interact with such systems every time we use digital services through the web. We we'll learned about the inherent problems in centralized systems and the importance of designing our system to scale to multiple machines. We define the distributed system as a system of several processes running on different computers, communicating with each other through the network, and they're sharing a state or are working together towards a common goal. Designing distributed systems is not easy, and it's no coincidence that the biggest companies in the tech industry are paying top salaries to engineers who can build and architect such scalable systems. On the flip side, distributed systems is one of the most exciting topics in computer science. So in the next lecture, we will learn about the first tool to overcome those challenges and start designing our first distributed algorithm. See you in the next lecture.